Welcome everyone to our weekly webinar where we're learning together about the latest real estate trends during the pandemic. Today we have an exciting panel on how to grow your brokerage organically with our outstanding guest, Stacy Staub, founder and owner of Weston Maine Homes. Stacy's a Colorado-based real estate expert with over 15 years of experience in both residential sales and industry marketing. Stacy's a strong believer in out-of-the-box technology, but knows that you have to be have to easily be able to make it your own. Thanks for joining us, Stacy. Thank you for the introduction. Absolutely. Uh, as always, we're joined by uh, our founder and CEO, Natalia. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Stacy, for joining us. Absolutely. So so today we're going to be discussing different methods and techniques in which agencies can grow and survive. Um, we're going to look specifically at the organic growth model by increasing business through sales. Um, all too often, you know, when seeking organic growth, brokers go straight to marketing uh, led new business and miss out on the simplest methods of organic growth that can be achieved without spending any money. Um, so Stacy, what I'd like to do to start off is um, kind of get a little background on your current market condition in Colorado and how it's been affected by the pandemic. Sure. Um, surprises at every turn, right? Um, <laughs> We, uh, we've been in a strong seller's market here for almost a decade. And um, so when the pandemic hit, we were already at extremely low inventory levels. Um, we need about 30,000 listings to be balanced. And uh, we had about 6,000 at that time. Um, so extremely competitive market, um, very fast moving. Uh, we had our best month ever in February. Um, so that just kind of showed um, how our market was pacing. And um, also uh, the Broncos didn't go to the Super Bowl. So our spring market hit very early. It's very dependent on football here. Um, and we had a really warm January. So all of these factors had come into play that were like kind of creating this early uh, 2020 frenzy and then we got very shut down on March 13th. So um, we didn't know what was going to happen, but we were under strict stay at home orders for about 45 days. Um, no showings of real estate were happening. Um, and so we had to quickly adapt and our agents learned very quickly how to sell houses without people being uh, allowed to see them. Um, so, uh, that was rough and, but, um, boy, our agents are survivors and adapted and, um, we had a little bit of a down, uh, month in April and then, uh, picked right back up, um, in May and June and July, uh, was crazy as well. So, uh, no signs of slowing down here. So that sort of leads me into my next question um, around technology and culture. So obviously nobody could have you know, seen this current pandemic coming um, and you certainly were able to um, adjust and adapt. And um, you know, again, that, that goes back to culture and technology. So why is building the right culture and implementing the right technology so crucial for today's brokerages? And what kinds of technology have you been able to implement that have um, allowed you to be successful? Um, I think for us, the face-to-face -face culture was very important, um, but luckily because it was so strong, um, it's kind of carried us through um, in a time when we can't get together. Um, so adapting really quickly, um, our CTO, Greg Fisher, um, evaluated every meeting platform on the market and settled with Livestorm. So Livestorm has been our home online now. Um, they're a great uh, resource. And um, we started having a company update online every Friday morning at 10. Um, and we've kept that very consistent since uh, mid-March. And we consistently have 100, 125 agents on those calls. Um, we also record everything so they can watch it later. 
but the importance of having that constant communication and those updates because things kept changing um, for realtors here. Uh, we were, you know, allowed to do showings and then we weren't. And then we were, uh, you know, allowed to do open houses, sort of. And um, keeping our agents compliant and um, in line with the things that were coming down from the federal, state, and uh, our uh, local associations then too um, was really critical. Um, I had mid-year meetings with our agents in June and July, and the biggest piece of feedback that I got during those meetings was how crucial those meetings were to not only their professional life and like feeling informed, but also to their mental health. Um, so uh, we try to mix up the content now. It's not all COVID, COVID, COVID anymore, thank goodness. Um, but it's still, you know, we're still keeping an eye on things. Things are still changing. Um, our mask mandate statewide um, just got extended for another 30 days. Um, so that we're under very strict regulations here. Um, but now we've tried to bring in some fun stuff too, so. Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's, sounds, uh, sounds really cool. Everybody needs to keep their sanity in a time like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I'm hearing that really the critical parts uh, in this uh, in this journey was uh, to have professionals, technology professionals that are able to evaluate tech stack and also help the team to adopt it, to explain it and adopt it. It's, it's not only evaluating whether uh, the founder, the management understands it, uh, but also how it will be adopted. Uh, probably testing and so on. And besides that, uh, the practices that you uh, involved with communication, you manage to have them uh, as, a, as a routine. And I, I've noticed as well uh, in our team, uh, we have uh, three different conversations every single week for different teams. Mm -hmm. And it's now just a routine as a, and a practice. We had it before COVID-19. However, during uh, the shelter in, in place. It's, it's really helped a lot because we have this routine. We can't wait to get on a call all together to discuss all the achievements we did, all the victories. And I think it will stay for a long time, right? Those communication channels, it's not only to see each other in the office, but also this form of updates that we're recording. And if someone uh, cannot attend, they always know that they can get there and see what's going on in the company. Yeah, I think it's really um, been made so apparent. And um, at my last company, I always, we had nonstop meetings. Um, I was in management um, at that brokerage and it felt like we were just meeting to meet. And so um, when I started Weston, Maine, um, for a while it was just me and my business partner and we hung out all the time. So we didn't have like set structured meetings. As the team grew and our executive team um, became larger and then our admin staff became larger, I still never really focused on that. And now I've realized what was missing because same thing, now we have our regular call um, and I do so look forward to it. It's very structured, you know, we have um, certain points that we hit at every meeting, um, address issues and we always have, um, like a list of things that we're gonna get through and it's very productive, um, which just felt so different than my last company where it felt like, oh, we were sitting here again, talking about yeah. the same thing. I wanna go work. And um, so, but yeah, I agree. Some things have definitely um, changed for the better. Yeah, and, and also how we can play with recordings. We can skip yeah. the parts that uh, are not referred to our business. We can also make the speed of the of the recording faster so that we get to the point where which uh, is important for our part of the job. Yeah, so it, all this environment is uh, really teaching us, those who are very tech driven, but also those who are still learning uh, and, and definitely uh, they have a better acceleration of this technology adoption. Yeah, for sure. And luckily, the rest of our tech stack was um, already there. And we we are not a traditional brokerage that has where every agent has a desk. Um, we have, you know, four different storefronts and the office, the agents pop in and out. Um, but we did have a lot of in-person education and chances for everyone to get together and parties that they invited their clients to. Um, so being able to use technology to replace some of those benefits and experiences has been um, definitely trial and error. Um, we had a local market stats expert um, 
come on. And we would like, usually she comes every month and does a market report for the agents. So we thought like, why not have them invite their clients? And it's going to be so interesting. And it was really hard to get people to show up. So um, like, it's not the same as having a party, but um, yeah. a lot of people ended up watching the recording, which was great. Um, but uh, the rest of the tech stack, thank goodness for Slack. Um, we have had the entire company on Slack from day one, and that has really helped us stay um, connected and cohesive as well. Another thing that stuck out to me when we were um, on our prep call, um, and this goes to, you know, being tech forward thinking, not just for your own employees, but your clients as well, was leveraging alternative lenders. Um, and, and that was a way for you to not only increase sales, but also be beneficial and value add to your clients. So could you speak a little bit to how you were one of the early adopters of, of working with alternative lenders and, and how it helped both sides? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've never been a company that um, is, has been scared of iBuyers or anything like that. Um, we're very open and want to know everything and we'll never say never kind of thing. Um, but we're really excited about a recent partnership that we've developed with a company called Knock. Um, they are an alternative lending source. And what they do is so cool. So they're only in a few markets so far. Um, they just uh, launched Denver with us um, about a, maybe it's been a month now. And um, what they do is enable our clients to be able to buy their replacement home before they sell their home. And the advantages of that are obvious. Um, not having to deal with showings, not having to, um, you know, being able to move out of the old house and into the new house before putting it on the market. What NUC also does, um, there's so many benefits, but they actually finance six months of the old mortgage and they make available up to $25,000 in additional funds so that um, the homeowner can make any necessary improvements or updates or upgrades in order to get top dollar for that home. So, uh, so much better than a bridge loan, although that's always been like an option. Um, this product uh, has much better rates, um, very low costs, and their rates are super competitive. So um, much better rates than which other uh, product? Than a bridge loan, because typically okay. a bridge loan, you're looking, you know, it's paying so much in fees and in rates. Um, Lender last resort, sort of. Yeah, it's really yeah. one of those things like you only do it if you really, really have to. Here in Denver, because things are so competitive, most people are selling and buying um, or they're buying for the first time. Those are the options, right? So um, being able to offer our clients um, this advantage has been really exciting. Um, with NOC, you have to, um, they used to be a brokerage in Texas and they've now switched to complete lend the, com the lending side completely. So they're partnering Part, partnering with brokerages. So um, only the agents that are certified and part of one of those brokerages is able to uh, offer this to their clients. And by certification, do you mean um, education and training that they have to go through the NOC uh, platform? Yeah, so it's a couple of hours. Um, you know, it's a uh, webinar style. Um, there's you know, tons of opportunities to ask all of your questions and uh, really clear up any uh, misconceptions as well as pick up the talking points so that you're able to really articulate uh, this concept to clients because it's brand new um, and people are blown away by it. They're like, what? Yeah. I can sell my house or, or buy my house before I sell? That's amazing. Um, so that's been really an exciting offering for us. And, and here, and I actually, uh, sorry, Willie, be before we dive into how you build this partnership and uh, further questions, I actually want to share two slides to elaborate a little bit uh, more to our audience why it's so important right now to pay attention to new business models. Uh, so Paul Levine, uh, the former uh, president of Trulia, he shared those uh, four um, trends uh, shaping the industry. That was last year at Inman. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously some of those uh, are still very relevant. Um, iBuyers uh, right now are more and more turning into 
uh, into brokerages, traditional brokerages. Uh, so we're just observing what's happening with this trend, but uh, of course we continue to, to discuss that. And it's mostly to serve uh, the sellers while uh, what, what you are talking about is uh, serving buyers uh, um, first. Um, but what are the uh, four trends? So it's obviously tech forward brokerages, just like uh, yours, Stacy. Uh, and we're seeing that more and more agents are looking to the uh, technology stack of the brokerage they're joining. It's really important today what kind of innovation one brokerage is embracing. Uh, then uh, the other part is new financing options. Uh, so these are the items that we will dive a little bit today with Stacy as an example. Also, we'll be talking about uh, these options uh, on our next webinar where we will, we will cover more about mortgage tech. And uh, all those new financing options, absolutely worth it to um, explore, not because it can uh, drive the revenue for agents, but also it's, it's a huge impact for the declining affordability uh, in the country. So I definitely will, uh, would uh, advise to get deeper into this topic um, because of the impact uh, angle. And then finally, the fourth one is automating the transaction. It's a huge opportunity, $100 billion opportunity. And this is where our passion lies. Uh, this is where we uh, at Propy are building the products that would help to automate the transaction. And then the next slide that Paul shared is uh, going a little bit deeper uh, into what exactly we can automate and what's the future in the, of the next 15 years. So the last 15 years were dedicated um, uh, to internet innovation. Uh, so truly a Zillow, Realtor.com were built, they were aggregating listings, they really uh, put the real estate market into the hands of the consumer where they can absorb uh, and observe uh, what is going on with the market and they can reach out to agents in their local markets. They can see how those agents are active, professional and so on. Uh, but the next 15 years will be all about innovation in purchase home, as you can see here, financing and then close and take title. And that's the mortgage origin. And here are some of the startups that Paul uh, suggested to look after blend uh, earn up, ribbon, Proppy, Modus, Qualia. So all those startups plus Knock, uh, plus we know DV Homes, um, Fly Homes. These are startups that are helping the buyers to make better, uh, quicker, I would say, uh, closings with mortgage, uh, as well as uh, they can help uh, consumers to actually apply as an offer uh, with uh, cash, a uh, cash offer. Uh, and uh, obviously uh, sellers are looking for those offers, either for offers from buyers, if the price makes sense, or uh, cash offers from end users. So these are the items that um, I just wanted to cover with a couple of names and examples. And it, it was amazing for me, Stacy, to actually learn in our prep uh, conversation uh, that uh, you are embracing these new technologies and you're implementing. So how, how did this uh, idea um, got to your table and how you embraced it? Was it, it, it actually hard to educate consumers and agents on these uh, innovative initiatives? So full credit to our CTO, Greg Fisher. Um, he's played a lot of roles in our industry. He um, started out, he um, was in residential leasing in Texas. He then opened a brokerage. And then he ended up um, at uh, move.com. So he was uh, part of the doorsteps team that ended up getting acquired. So he ended up working at realtor.com. So he has like a vast knowledge of the industry as well as contacts. But I tell you that guy never stops researching. Um, he's just constantly like, it's just how his brain works. And um, so he actually brought the opportunity to the team and said, I think this this is going to be a great idea. Like, let's get on a demo call. And um, uh, we really enjoyed the conversation that we had with the guys from Knock. I find them like so um, with their heart in the right place too. And I really appreciate that they're um, now partnering <laughs> with realtors instead of hiring them um, because that's something that's been such a challenge. And it's always the push pull, right? It's like, is this company ever going to become a brokerage? They kind of went the other way. So they were a brokerage that now is focusing on 
the service uh, servicing portion. Um, so that just um, gives them so much insight into the actual process. So they've done hundreds of these deals in Texas and a couple other markets. And their lead uh, trainer, and I forget his actual position, but I think he's VP of something. Um, he was actually one of the first realtors that started um, utilizing this product. So he really understands the client's concerns, the client's questions, the road bumps that can, can come up. And so he's been really great with our team, um, addressing their concerns and giving them those talking points. They've also provided us with wonderful collateral. So everything from uh, a landing page for a brokerage to one sheets that they can um, put in their listing presentations, all kinds of graphics and little videos that they can share online to really um, help push out the product. So it's been great. Awesome. And so in a, in a time like this, um, where everything's all of a sudden gone remote, how do you compete with the um, digital brokerages uh, of the world? Um, it seems like they'd be perfectly positioned for, for something like this, but clearly you've been able to quickly adjust and uh, continue to do well. Sure. I mean, I think there's room in the market for everyone, certainly. Um, but there are only a certain type of agent that is really going to thrive thrive in a virtual only brokerage. Um, agents by design and by nature are incredibly social. And um, for many of them, having an avatar um, is not going to be their last stop. Um, so I think a brokerage like ours was really well positioned because we, yes, we had the virtual capability and we were able to do everything that we um, uh, need to do in a transaction to facilitate it and to make sure that our agents are taken care of. Um, but they also really miss the offices. Um, they uh, Every day now I go in for at least a couple hours and I can't wait to see people and I wish I could hug them. Um, but having that, um, that interaction, I just think is still so vital. Um, I've hired several agents during COVID and met them over Zoom and um, now meeting them face to face is so exciting. Um, but it's also made me realize I love a face to face interview. Yeah. <laughs> you learn a lot more about people just yeah, the, the body language and so many items that uh, you, you cannot uh, express on Zoom calls. For and sure. Is, is this a uh, way of hiring is actually the secret for the organic growth? Yeah, I mean, we've never done any recruiting. So really, it's been word of mouth. Um, most of our agents came from introductions from other agents that were already with us or from uh, affiliates. So title representatives, lenders, um, all types of vendors, um, you know, even down to plumbers and home inspectors, uh, introduce us to wonderful agents all the time because they're seeing who's unhappy or who's complaining about their current brokerage or who isn't thriving in their environment. And, um, you know, I get those reach outs all the time. So I, that has really been the secret for us. And I know that other employing brokers are like, shut up, you're still making phone calls. I'm really not. It's not my jam. <laughs> yeah. and, and why those vendors are introducing them to you? Because we also have a number of agents asking us by email, those we, who we, we even don't know, like who do you recommend us as a brokerage, let's say in Arizona? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there anyone that using your, uh, your platform because we want to uh, utilize blockchain? So probably if we find a brokerage that uses your solution, that, that would be a good fit for us. Uh, others are, we had a recent uh, discussion uh, which team to join in Florida, which brand to join. Uh, they're changing the brand right now. For them, it was really important, the, uh, this brand, uh, to give them the freedom of choosing tools uh, mm -hmm. because, again, they want to use something like Proppy, other tools, and they don't want to just inherit what uh, the, the central office is, uh, is telling them to, to utilize. So what, what's your secret? I think it is the flexibility. So we have a wonderful offering. Our business model is very competitive. Um, but in the end too, uh, we don't require them to use any piece of our technology. Um, 
So many of our agents use an alternative CRM or an alternative, you know, uh, we don't have any lender or title affiliates or anything like that. They really have the choice to use whoever they would like. Um, so I think that's part of it, but really it's our branding that sets us apart. Um, I've had many people uh, reach out for an interview that said, I've been following you on Instagram and I just had to check you out. Um, and then when I get to put a folder full of beautiful marketing materials in front of them, um, it's usually the clincher um, because it is just so different than what other brokerages are offering um, because of our amazing creative team. So uh, those are really like when people, I think if you asked most of our agents why they're there, it would be because of the team and the support, but also because of the branding. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. That kind of brings me to another point. Um, you've clearly built a strong culture there. So it's one thing to recruit agents just based on you know numbers and productivity, um, but that's only one piece of the puzzle. They have to uh, buy into the culture. And, and, and to me, uh, the fact that you guys were able to adjust and thrive during this time speaks to that. So uh, aside from just pure productivity, what are some other characteristics that you look for um, when deciding whether or not to hire an agent? We really are looking for collaborators. So uh, people who um, are generous with whatever they have. If they're existing agents and they have been in the business for 20 years, are they someone who will hop on the company call and share you know, something that they've learned or something that works for them? Um, our agents teach classes for our agents all the time. Um, we have an amazing new agent training program that many of our agents participate in as instructors. Uh, we also have a really great mentor program and we're one of the few boutiques that do hire new agents in our market um, because I feel so strongly like that's our way of giving back to the industry. Um, so there's many brokerages that will say, come back to us in two years once you've made some mistakes and know what you're doing. <laughs> And for us, we let that happen um, under our roof. So um, I think our more established agents really enjoy that energy too. Um, it's easy to get um, unexcited about this work um, when you have a few rough transactions or you're in a you know a stream of difficult clients for some reason or something like that. And having those new kids like going like, well, can I cover your inspection or, you know, like, do you want me to go show them this Saturday? Um, that makes a huge difference as well. So we have a really, really cool team. That's great. That's, uh, that's very unique. And, and how long have you been doing that for with um, your uh, agents? Uh, since day one. Day one. Okay. Mm -hmm. And have you seen a higher retention in those agents or sort of a loyalty where you've invested in them? So they have a loyalty to you? Yeah. And I think um, many of them would, uh, we have had a few like get recruited away. Recruiting is really, you know, aggressive here. Um, and then several of them have come back, you know, the door is always open. And I always say I have a bless and release program. Like if you need to go try something else, you should. And, you know, I'm always here uh, for support. And if you decide uh, that West Maine was your home, that the door is always open. So yeah. Sometimes that perspective helps. <laughs> Do you find a higher adoption rate in terms of the younger um, agents um, being able to adopt technology quicker than some of the older agents and, and um, just more willing to because they've sort of grown up with it? I think because we make it so simple, like our tech stack is like, it's dead easy. There is nothing that is going to take you a week to learn. I onboard um, every agent one-on-one. -on -one. It takes me an hour to introduce them to every platform, make sure they know how to log in, make sure that they understand why we have that technology and how they could use it to support or grow their business. Um, so sure, there's some older agents who, you know, it takes them a few minutes to get all the apps downloaded and we're just there one-on-one -on -one helping them figure it all out. I never want that to be a roadblock. And we do have very high um, usage rates on all of our technology. Um, not everyone uses everything, but they know it's there. Gotcha. And so we, we spoke a little bit about this on our, on our prep call, but you obviously adopted during the um, uh, pandemic to, you know, the, the more remote um, way of, of conducting business, which of those things are kind of here to stay and which of those, as you go back to a more traditional way of doing business, are you not going to need to um, 
uh, take advantage of? Um, definitely the wiring of funds. Um, we, uh, we used to have our agents, you know, the title company would cut them checks and then they needed to bring uh, that check into the office and I would cut them a check back or um, someone on our team would. And now that's all become so, so much more fluid. I just kind of didn't trust it before. And um, now it's like, oh, money in the bank. Um, isn't that fun? And the agents really appreciate that convenience as well. Same thing with their clients, like with the delivering of earnest money, um, that's become much more smooth. And uh, the possibility of having a remote notary, which was not allowed in Colorado before uh, COVID. So I hope that that sticks around um, because it really has served our clients so well. Um, whether they're signing in a parking lot or they're you know, meeting at a convenient location and the notary is meeting them, um, it's um, I think for some people more comfortable than going to the title company um, and lots of times more convenient. Gotcha. We discussed that actually in the prop call because I've talked to one title company which had remote notarization embraced during the shelter in place. But once uh, the country started to reopen, uh, for some reason, uh, there was a decline in the usage. Uh, so I wonder whether it was uh, uh, the platform was not as user uh, friendly or maybe agents and title agents uh, were more inclined to meet in person. What's, what's your take on that? I think it depends on the title company. I think that a lot of title companies would rather people come to them. It's more convenient for them, right? So choosing your closer and your, you know, title um, insurance provider is so important for so many reasons. But I think if they're willing to accommodate um, your business the way that you and your clients need it to work, um, then that's going to win them some business. Um, you know, I have a closer that I've followed to three different title companies now. Um, she, she's my ride or die for sure. And um, she'll go wherever I ask her to. Um, so, uh, and she always has. Um, but I think now having the wider possibility of that um, has just made it more efficient for the agents. Yeah, and that's this is what uh, makes us very, very passionate about because uh, while we have created a transaction platform that is in some segments is similar to Skyslope, Dot Loop, and the like, or CTM in Colorado, uh, at the other uh, on the other point, our goal is to automate the transaction. This means that we're uh, stepping into the payment. Uh, we can't wait to introduce uh, earnest money deposit app uh, because when you upload such an app with your title company, you still have to enter some data uh, redundantly again and again, send the purchase agreement. Uh, so uh, we're planning, for example, to have this uh, check scanner in our uh, system and uh, process the payment. When Then we also have a payment gateway for wire transfers so that we avoid the wire fraud risk. At the same time, we have the data uh, and the, we have the possibility to process the wire transfer. So we get the bank account of the buyer, uh, of the escrow company, we process the transaction, we have the evidence that uh, the, uh, the payment has, uh, has executed already. Uh, so obviously those remote notarization and, and other pieces are educating the industry right now on the new possibilities, but also it opens door to further innovation uh, in that space. And we're very, very excited to hear that uh, you and your agents want to have these opportunities stay on the market and not go away. Oh yeah, for sure. And same thing like with lenders that require wet signatures, you know, it's like, can we all get past that? <laughs> so, it's so inconvenient. So I do think um, that's all so exciting. Um, and unfortunately we did have wire for a wire fraud incident a couple of weeks oh, ago. One of our clients did. lost their, um, or their, that's, uh, down payment. That's, that's very fantastic that you are mentioning that yeah. nobody wants to talk about it. Everyone. Oh, no. Yeah. It was like, um, trust me, we dug into it. It wasn't a mistake on our agent's part. It was actually, um, the title company, uh, where an email got hacked and, yeah. Unfortunately, our client, um, you know, sent $25,000 to the wrong account. Thanks to the training that we've already provided around that, our agent knew, like, knew immediately, almost, um, that that had happened. And she was able to loop in the FBI and the local police. 
and they did um, manage to freeze the funds. So uh, the client hasn't gotten that money refunded yet, uh -huh. but they're, they are expected to, but that hardly ever happens. Um, and that agent is like, you guys, I like, she's happy to talk all about it because she was like, you think it can't happen to you. It can, you yeah. know, it absolutely can happen to anyone. Last yeah. year, it was a case or in the beginning of this year, it was a case where a, a couple in California lost $700,000. They couldn't stop it. So uh, awesome job to your agent and the training that she stopped that so, so quickly and the money uh, were not lost because in such kind of situations, uh, the consumer starts to blame everyone, the bank, the title agent, the, the broker, the brokerage. And, uh, and it's, it's great that you were able to stop. And our goal here is actually to make it impossible uh, yeah. because uh, our uh, goal is the, the bank account to be shared with us the escrow company share or the title company share their bank account with us. And then we made the transfer after we make the three level of validation uh, because for our system, it's not just the bank account that matters, but actually who is the recipient. And I don't understand why banks don't do this verification. I know. Yeah. Two billion dollar annually lost with uh, every year the, the amount is doubling. Um, but anyhow, uh, that's fantastic that there is a awareness uh, of agents about the issue. Uh, great case that you are sharing uh, this because this, again, because of the reputation issues, many are preferring not to share at all. Yeah. Uh, so that oh, well, that's a shame. And you know what? Like, I was happy to, um, you know, front that down payment for them so that they could close on time because I was like, this is not the client's fault. She did exactly what she thought the title company was telling her to do. Um, and it certainly wasn't our agent's fault. And so it didn't come out of her pocket either. Like right. us as a company, we had to like, you have to take some level of responsibility. Um, and luckily it seems like karma is gonna pay us right back, which is awesome. Um, but if it hadn't, you know, that would have been something we were willing to accept. And I will say we did go through all of our company email accounts, make sure that everyone had their two-factor authorization yeah. turned on. It was important education and a learning opportunity for everyone that luckily wasn't $700,000, you know. Yeah. Well, and one, one more learning uh, thing here is that even with two-factor identification, it's, it matters what is your second factor because if, if it's just the phone, uh, that may not work because my account was hacked. My phone uh, number was stolen. Uh, so uh, everything that I had with that kind of uh, two-factor authentication. Just so scary. Yeah, it Fix is. it, Natalia. Fix it. I'm glad yeah. you're on the case. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry no, you're about fine. That. I tried to mute but couldn't. Yes, Stacy. <laughs> so we will we're working hard to fix that problem for sure. <laughs> Someone has really? to. Yeah, we do have more questions as I had something in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No, so you um you talked about um that's a great example in terms of security and why it's so important. So there's so many different aspects within the transaction where that valuable information, uh, that vulnerable information um, can be exposed. And it's amazing talking to different people um, and how their processes uh, take place, um, whether it's wiring a deposit, um, commission, whatever it may be. So um, is that something that you were conscious of before you had a fraud issue or is it something that you were sort of reactive to? No, for sure. I mean, we've brought in um, classes on it and it was so classic. It was one of those, you know, um, what they always teach you in these wire fraud classes is um, there are hackers that will sit in their parents' basement somewhere, I don't know, and just watch the ones they've hacked into an email and look for keywords like closing, like wire instructions, um, things like that. So you should never be emailing those things anyway. And all of that did happen in this case um, where uh, the title reps account um, was literally hijacked. And so at that point where they saw the opening um, and the client had asked for the title company to call them with the wiring instructions, 
Um, the title rep never received that email. It was intercepted by the hacker and they gave the client a call with wiring instructions. So luckily those funds were wired to um, a Wells Fargo account instead of like Bank of Nigeria or something. Yeah. And so Wells Fargo was able to freeze the account and it was discovered that this was an older gentleman who had a girlfriend overseas who was basically using his account to, you know, launder these funds. So oh, wow. um, it was Did like they find many, um, many cases through this account? Um, I don't know. Um, that's a good question now. Um, oh, hopefully not. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully not. Well, yeah. thank you for stopping that, this yeah. one at least. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so we'll be wrapping up soon. Um, uh, Stacey, if you can think about the tips uh, for agents and broker owners on how to grow organically, how to embrace uh, innovation. Before those tips, we also would love to hear uh, what do you think about the future of real estate in 10, 20 years, how it will change, how technology will impact our industry. And meanwhile, um, uh, please ask questions on social media uh, or here uh, on Zoom. Uh, we're looking forward to hear from you. Hi, everyone, uh, to all our attendees. Uh, thank you so much for joining us every single week. Um, so yeah, Stacy. so what, what's the future of real estate in your opinion? Um, I think the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? So the value of a real estate professional um, is something that I don't think um, will go away anytime soon. There's still boots on the ground, factors that need to um, happen and they need, um, you know, clients need guidance. And I think that role uh, will remain as important as ever. But I love the innovations in the technology. I mean, even just from when I started selling real estate, which is about 20 years ago, um, uh, so much has changed, but yet so much has stayed the same. So um, I think uh, things that can take barriers and like bumps out of the process, like a smooth contract creation experience and a smooth, um, you know, non-contact lending experience and uh, the things that you've talked about with, you know, even down to earnest money deposits. Like I remember driving all over town to drop off earnest money. Um, how silly, right? And having to go to the client, pick it up and then take it to the title company all the way across town. Yeah. Um, so things like that just make agents um, more productive and have more time um, to really focus on the things that really do make a difference for their clients whether it's a special surprise and delight kind of experience or it's um you know making any part of the transaction or the move easier um i think we're going to continue to see that and it makes me so excited awesome. um so yeah and, and you just you just mentioned the uh, uh online mortgage process we will be actually having a guest on our next webinar uh regarding new age of, of lending where everything is happening online. And I personally tested this system recently. Uh, so it, it will be a fantastic discussion as well. And I think all mortgage providers have to go to that uh, route and, and just follow what startups are doing and evolving um, to stay relevant, to be helpful to the consumer, to the agent. And again, it's a great opportunity for agents to learn about these new startups and uh, educate and their customers that there are more options to get mortgage faster. Uh, there are more options to get into ownership uh, more efficiently. Yeah, and I would definitely encourage agents and brokerages to look at those opportunities. Um, we're actually hosting a class um, next week um, on uh, our uh, education platform. It's at genuinehustle.com. And Greg's going to be talking about how he develops these tech partnerships for our company um, and how those can benefit um, brokerages. Um, so that's going to be a really cool conversation. Um, and I think the more that we talk about it, um, I think that uh, so many of these brokerages are focused on building their own technology or, um, you know, trying to uh, solve these problems that are really better left to uh, professionals like you guys who can analyze things in a like non-biased way and look at how to solve problems and um, you know that's what brokerages should be uh, exploring. I know that 
um, like New Kids Alley at Inman conferences are always my favorite place to hang out um, because there's always so much like exciting energy and enthusiasm. And I just love seeing how developers and entrepreneurs are, uh, you know, trying to change the industry or at least make it better. Um, so I think it's super exciting. Yeah, I, I totally uh, hear you. And we have uh, regards from Nicole Bochamp. Stay Hi, Nikki. for you. <laughs> yes. Um, Nikki's a, a broker in Manhattan. Um, so she uh, is just now being able to venture out and show um, apartments again and uh, townhomes and condos and um, all sorts of beautiful properties. Um, but she was uh, very shut down uh, mm -hmm. through through the pandemic. So I think she's happy to have some fresh air, right, Nikki? <laughs> yeah, congrats, Nikki. Welcome back <laughs> to the industry. And um, uh, I totally agree with you, Stacey, that um, the, the way we embrace technology, especially in the transaction, CRM space, post-transaction, it's important to, to embrace third party and unbiased and brokerage agnostic uh, teams and, and, and um, technologies. Because as you know, even if you introduce some tool within your platform, it could be really cool. But then if you have to collaborate with the other side, then the other agents will not want to use uh, your tool. They will, will want to use theirs. And thus there is no uh, exchange of data and uh, there is a lot of conflict of interest and so on. So I, I hear you that you'd rather test uh, those new, new kits and see what would fit your culture, but not invest in development internally. Yeah, um, it just point. doesn't make sense for us to go building our new CRM, our own CRM, when there's plenty yeah. of good ones out there. Um, Tested, <laughs> yeah, used and so on. Yeah. Uh, we have a question uh, from social media. Um, Hi, Stacy. what advice would you give to uh, young yourself about starting your own brokerage? Um, do it. <laughs> just go for it. Um, just jump, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, what I always, the advice that I always give to agents is if you aren't thriving at your current brokerage, please make a move. Um, there's no shame in that. And if it's not working for you, there's somewhere where you're going to find what you need. And, um, you know, I have some agents who have been in the business five years and have been at five different brokerages before they found us. And I'm so glad they kept looking. Um, so I think like never stop exploring, keep your options open, but really like be cognizant of what you're paying for and what you're actually using out of that offering. Um, it's great if your brokerage has all the bright, shiny tech tools in the world and you're paying, you know, boatloads for it every month. But if you're not using it, you know, what's the ROI for you? Um, so that's first. And then if you have already explored all the options and you haven't found the right place for you, you know, starting your own brokerage might be a great option. And I can tell you from experience, it's certainly not impossible. Um, you know, we started an independent brand because we really wanted to do things our own way. Um, but certainly buying a franchise might be an option. Um, but being your own boss is a really, uh, really cool thing once you've been in this uh, business for as long as I have. And being able to support agents in the ways that you see that they need it um, is um, such a great way to live. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, so we will be wrapping up uh, final tips for the audience, uh, Stacy. And after we will finalize, we'll stop live streaming for social media. We'll stay here on the Zoom in the room with attendees who would like to learn more about Proppy. We'll say uh, goodbye to Stacy, uh, and then we'll dive into the product for only five minutes. We'll show the demo and we will address some of the points that we've discussed today, where we'll see the integrations of payments, uh, how, uh, how we are seeing the consumer uh, to see the visibility to the transaction. So uh, folks who would love to learn more, uh, please stay online. And now, Stacy, what are your major tips for agents and brokerages to grow their business organically and naturally? Um, I always give this piece of advice because it's always appropriate, but I have this mantra and it's done is better than perfect. 
And I think you can probably relate to this, Natalia. Like if you had waited until your product was absolutely perfect before launching, you might still not be launched. And um, I think agents get hung up um, and broker owners get hung up on the little things that no one's really going to notice. And um, every business is a continuous work in progress. So, um, you know, just keep in mind, like, uh, if you're waiting until it's done, it might never be. Um, and it, it might be too late once you do. So um, that's always the advice that I'd give. Yeah, totally. I totally relate to that. And on that topic, uh, there is an awesome book uh, blitz scaling by reed hoffman the founder of linkedin uh i know many super organized people would love to build everything perfectly and then to launch uh, but this book uh, book explains like no experiment first build mvp test the market it's okay to have uh not the perfect organization and not uh, a great system and uh, like everything structured it's it's okay to be in cows uh, for some time but uh, that's so that I, I just found it uh, so that's the book I, I totally advise for those who want to jump into a new adventure I'm gonna okay. put it on my list <laughs> <laughs> yeah Stacy any any book you would advise um I am rereading um uh, start with why, um, which I actually have right in here too, even That's though I didn't cool. know you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's by Simon Sinek. Um, many people have read it, but I find that going back to it when I'm um, trying to make a big decision or when I'm evaluating something. Um, for me right now, um, my kids are going back to school and that looks very different than it has in the past. And so um, I'm rereading it because I just find it comforting and grounding and also inspiring. So Yeah, that, that's fantastic. I actually have this TED talk with the yeah. author, author on my to-do uh, list for this week uh, because it's really important to revisit uh, the, the main reason why we're here, why we're doing our job, why we're launching our companies or joint teams, like why are we doing that? Why are we joining this mission? So it's a, it's a great one. Thank you. I will also put it in my list uh, as a book because uh, I only watched a, a video which, which was fantastic. Uh, Awesome. Well, Stacy, thank you so much for your time today, for your valuable uh, advice uh, and the background you provided uh, to our audience here today. Uh, thank you very much. Looking forward to be connected. And uh, I guess you mentioned Instagram. Uh, that's the platform that it's better to follow you and uh, follow your, uh, your success, right? Yeah, that's the prettiest place, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so that's the pretty version um but you, i'm easy to find on facebook um uh on linkedin um so i'd love to connect <laughs>